Hey guys, my name's Kian Hushmand and in today's video I've got something that a lot of people want to get their hands on. It's the Sub-Zero Rogue 6 30 inch baritone guitar. Let's have a look. So I originally ordered this late December 2020 um, and at the time the expected delivery date was around mid-Jan and then it jumped to August and now it's jumped to September. So a lot of people want to get their hands on this guitar it's very backlogged and um, I was just lucky enough to get it in the right time frame. So today we're just going to be unboxing it and kind of doing a first impressions of what it sounds like and then later I'll do another video kind of going through the whole thing in depth and then later after that I'll do a video of actually upgrading the guitar to make it a really really cool unique instrument. I don't want to spoil too much before we actually unbox it but before we get into that if you guys like this video at any time please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear and if you want to see more of this stuff definitely think about subscribing. If you guys want to support me directly and what I'm doing, definitely check out my Patreon where I'll have tabs, stems and DRs for all the original music I make for the YouTube channel, as well as all my affiliate links in the description. But enough of that, let's get into the unboxing. So first thing before I even open the box, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's very poorly packaged. Keeping in mind that this is a 250 euro guitar or like 250 US-ish and for any Australian viewers that's probably around 350-400 so I wasn't expecting much but I don't know there's like a hole here as well like I feel like it could have been packaged a little bit nicer I have really really bad luck with shipment every time I get a shipment from anything there's always something that's wrong with it whether it's damage or I have to send it back or something like that so I really really hope that isn't the case otherwise this video will never get posted I don't have a Stanley knife, so I'm going to use the kitchen knife. Okay, so they have double boxed it. I'll give them that. I underestimated how long this was actually going to be. Holy shit. So it was double boxed, so it came in a box within a box. So that does offer a little bit more protection. But as you can see, this is what it looks like when you get it. Truss rod adjustment key, which looks a little bit smaller than I anticipated, to be honest. Considering it is a base six guitar. Holy moly. Let's get this off. This thing is long. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. <laughs> this thing is absolutely stupid. I love it. You know what, the 30 inch, is this 30 inch? It really doesn't feel like 30 inches. As you can hear, the tuning absolutely went bonkers on the way here. But there it is, the Sub-Zero Rogue 6 30 inch baritone bass 6 guitar. Straight away I'm already noticing lots of QC issues with this guitar and I haven't even like gone around it yet. I'll do some close-ups but straight away like before I've even really done anything there's this really really rough mark on the binding here like this is like unacceptable. Again around here on the very edge of the fretboard um, it's very like very rough and very dirty. It's actually cracked where the fret is as well. Um, the neck pickup is wobbly, uh, the bridge pickup isn't too bad. The knobs do feel really nice, I'll give that to them. It feels like my Jackson's actually, my USA, is like it's kind of got the same rigidity um, and it doesn't feel chalky at all, which is a massive, massive plus. Toggle switch feels okay. I'm not a massive fan of like Gibson style toggle switches, but for a 250 euro guitar, it is what it is. String ferrules on the back are pretty evenly banged in. Um, one of them sticking out, it's the last one, but you know, not too much of a big deal. I have seen worse on more expensive guitars, so I'll give them that. The routing on the neck joint and stuff, again, it's a little bit rough, but I have seen worse on more expensive guitars. Um, so you know what, all in all, on the, at least on the front of the guitar, it's not too bad. Um, the worst thing I've probably seen so far is definitely this here. There are a couple tool marks across the whole neck basically, um, definitely around where like it meets the headstock, there's definitely a few tool markings there. And it's almost like they forgot to um, rub finish on the back of this headstock and it's very, very, very rough. Again, like these are pretty minor things and like things you never feel when you're playing, but it's just, I don't know, annoying to see. If I'm not mistaken, this comes shipped with a 20 to 90 set of strings. So it is fairly thick and the strings I'm putting on it are actually a little bit lighter because I'm really only gonna be tuning this to drop E. 
or at least a six string variant of drop E. The nut isn't really flush with the fretboard. Um, again, not something you will notice when you're playing, but it is to be noted. There is a little bit of like a paint drip on the side of the headstock here, but again, this is just a cosmetic thing and something I'm not really worrying about when it's such a cheap guitar. So really, when it comes down to it, the only thing that I'm really worried about is this really rough um, binding here. Like it's actually terrible. Um, and I don't even know if it can be fixed. I'll take it to a tech, but that's something you might need to be aware of if you were to order this yourself. Uh, actually, nah, looking at the fretboard now, there are a couple um, scratches in the fretboard and they're pretty deep. Like they can't, they might be able to be painted over, but you can tell that the fretboard was dyed because there's like a little bit of paint overlay on the binding, or at least just like wood fibers or something. It's very, very noticeable. And it kind of just makes the whole neck look dirty. Maybe with like some uh, fretboard cleaner you might be able to get that out but I'm not sure this neck pickup is so wobbly pickup cover off the actual finish itself like the paint job is actually really really nice this is a really nice paint job great burst um, there's no like obvious um, lines or anything like that in there it's actually really really good there is a slight like mark here on the back of the guitar but if I didn't have um, these softbox lights shining on it I would never notice from what I can tell this is a three piece body which actually isn't too bad there's like one clear line here one clear line here and I can't really pick out anything else all right now that we're done absolutely ripping this QC to shreds let's tune it up and plug it in and see what it sounds like Okay, so I've currently tuned it to drop D, so double drop D, and I've been playing around with it for like maybe 10, 15, you know, actually probably closer to half an hour now that I think about it. And um, the tuning hasn't really um, fluctuated that much at all, which I'm super, super surprised about. Um, even like the low D, like it's pretty much been sat in place the whole time and I've been beating the crap out of it. So I'm actually very, very surprised about that. And that's something that I have to give them accolades for. <laughs> So it doesn't really sound that bad when it's stock. That was on the neck pickup um, using Archetype Pliny on the default tone preset. So when you load up the plugin, that's the first thing you hear. And I'm um, just playing around, it sounded really, really good. But now let's get to the fun stuff. So double drop D, Fort and Nameless running in the background. Now we're talking. So even when you're in double drop D, which is a whole octave lower than your standard drop D, when you have a 30 inch guitar like this, the clarity is absolutely unmatched. And that's basically the major selling point of buying a guitar like this. Especially given the fact that this is like a dual humbucker guitar, it's more like a guitar than it is a bass. Um, at least that's the way I see it anyway. So when I saw this, I thought beauty, I don't have to mod anything. 
um, everything's already in that double humbucker configuration that I love and um, I can just tune stupid low on a stupid low scale and it will sound good no matter what. I still have to get used to it though. You can see when I jump back to the first fret there um, out of like pure habit, I didn't reach back far enough. So I do have to get a little bit used to it, but. I reckon that'll do it for today's video. I'll definitely do a more in-depth video later on, but as you can see, it sounds pretty good um, stock. The pickups are actually not too bad. I will be swapping it to a uh, bare knuckle impulse that I've got it sitting over there. Um, so that will be getting swapped and I'll do a sound comparison between both, but general playability, I mean like the neck feels really nice and smooth. Um, you don't really notice like the tool marks or like the weird binding job when you're playing. So it's not too bad to play. Um, overall, feels pretty good for a $250 guitar uh, or 250 euro you can't really go wrong especially when it's in such a weird spec like this but yeah if you guys like this video at any time please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard if you want to see me do a really in-depth video of this i suggest that you subscribe so you don't miss it if you want to support me directly definitely check out my patreon and all my affiliate links all that stuff is in the description below but until next time i'll catch you guys later thank you so much for watching ciao